The wait is finally over, as Ducati announced that Jorge Martin will join the factory MotoGP team in 2025. While Marc Marquez said that joining the Pramac Ducati MotoGP squad in 2025 is not an option for me. This comes after early news at Thursday morning that Ducati has chosen to promote Martin to the factory team seat for 2025, initially published by Gazeta dello Sport. Even though Ducati had previously stated that it wouldn't make an announcement this week, it had already decided the Italian Grand Prix this weekend as the place of its decision. The battle between Martin and Marquez for the position alongside double world champion Francesco Bagnaia has been obvious during the past few rounds. Ducati's decision has become more complicated due to Marquez's performance on the Grassini run GP23, even though championship leader Martin has only improved his chances this year after being second in the standings in 2023. Although Martin has said that a factory team seat was necessary for him to continue at Ducati, Marquez's speed in 2024, having only completed six rounds, along with his marketing may have given the former far from certain. Martin will be close to signing a contract to become a factory rider. Ducati's next task is to persuade Marquez to ride a factory bike at Pramac in 2025. Marquez, nevertheless, has ruled out this scenario, saying, Ducati has not informed me that I am not the chosen one. On the track, I'm giving it my all because there will be other opportunities. Pramac is a solid team, but since it isn't for me, I can't consider it. I am a man with different opinions. The newest bike concept, preferably with an official team, is what I'm after. Having an official bike and riding with an official team gives you even more support. Since joining Pramac would still require having a factory bike, Marquez had previously stated that he was not in favor of the concept, but in recent weeks, he seemed to be warming up to it. The Piera Mobility Group of KTM and Gas Gas is rumored to have made Marquez a tempting offer for 2025, but it's still uncertain at this point if the six-time MotoGP world champion will actually leave Ducati to try to adjust to his second new bike in as many years. Given the contractual obligations with the Italian manufacturer, it makes sense that the number 93 would join Pramac, which is currently deciding whether to extend its agreement with Ducati for another two years in order to continue taking factory machinery. I'm not going to change from one satellite team to another, he stated. After moving from Honda to Grassini last year, I'm feeling great. In my professional career, there were a lot of delicate situations, but today I'm competitive and having fun. I don't want to have to adapt to a bike again, but I don't rule it out, he said. I'm lucky that in those three scenarios, I would feel comfortable, although I have my priorities. After realizing he would never be able to wear factory Ducati Red, his next goal is to stay at Gressini and ride a works bike, the same one Martin and Bagnaia will be riding. Pramac would need to either sign with Yamaha, give up one of the two official prototypes, keep the other, and cede the other to Gressini in order to have this option, or he would need give up the chance to renew option with Ducati. I have already told the people who need to know about this how I would feel comfortable, Marquez stated. Perhaps not in the way he would have liked, Enea Bastianini has been at the centre of a chaotic MotoGP silly season. Instead of fighting for his factory Ducati ride, the Italian had to sit by as rumours swirled about his potential replacement, either Marc Marquez or Jorge Martin. There has been chaos. When asked about the rumours at Mugello on Thursday, Bastianini smiled. This was how it started out in the first race. It's not a big deal, but sometimes others question you about the future and I'm like, wow, time and time again, however it's normal. Despite winning four races with Grassini in 2022, Bastianini only managed one win in his injury-plagued rookie season with the official team. Given his far more promising start to the season, two podiums and fourth place in the World Championship, it would be surprising if he held on to his position. Three of us riders, Mark, Jorge Martin and myself, are in the top four. However, Jorge currently has something more than the others. Regarding the Pramac title leader, Bastianini said, we have seen many times. Mark performs well in races. His first few laps are his strongest. And for my part, I'm consistent, but not particularly explosive right now. I am aware that opting for a Ducati might be difficult. 
the factory Ducati rider deliberately ignored an important lap penalty that was given during the Catalonia round on Sunday because he was positive it had been handled incorrectly. But when that penalty was not served, it quickly escalated to a ride-through, a double long lap, and ultimately, when those were also ignored, a 32-second post-race time penalty. Bastianini believes that after meeting with the FIM stewards, they agreed that he was incorrectly penalized for the first long lap. In a breaking duel with Alex Marquez, the factory Ducati rider claims he was forced to run wide and lost more time than necessary as he tried to shorten the track. His attempt to have the plus 32 seconds taken out of his race time was, however, impossible because there is currently no way to undo an in-race long lap penalty. Allowing appeals carries the risk that it will take a long time during a competitive event and that it will take a while to provide the results. However, Bastianini would prefer to see a fast process that would allow teams to challenge in-race rulings that they believe to be clearly incorrect. We have the safety commission tomorrow, and it will be crucial to talk about what happened in Barcelona, Bastianini stated at Mugello on Thursday. The scenario was clear in my opinion, and after seeing numerous videos, I believe it was also a lot clearer for the stewards than it had been in the past. However, I believe that something needs to change because it is incorrect for all of the riders as well as for me. Because it's not the first time that it's happened to me, but it did this time. We'll see tomorrow. The Italian replied, I think it's correct, also with the team, to have the chance to speak about this during the race, when asked what he thought should be changed. Because there is nothing you can change after the race, the penalty is yours, full stop. I attempted to regain the 32 seconds, but the rules made it impossible. Bastianini had the sympathy of Fabio Di Gianantonio. He said, I got a long lap in Le Mans when I was losing a lot of time, cutting the chicane in the first sector. However, it appears that the rules are now set down in this way. You are forced to accept the penalty without being able to argue against it. You must use that penalty to its fullest extent. However, it would be excellent if the teams or the riders could communicate quickly with the stewards in the future just to better understand the situation. Also, I think it's a smart idea to do it throughout the race, as Anea mentioned, more equitable for all. However, we are discussing if and maybe. These are the regulations in force at the moment. Thus, sometimes you just have to accept it, even if it's difficult. Even though he thought it was incorrect, Bastianini would have only lost two to three seconds instead of seven points for dropping from ninth to 18th place if he had served the first lengthy lap. What are your thoughts? Made Ducati the right decision to choose Jorge Martin over Marc Marquez? Let us know in the comments down below and don't forget to like and subscribe for new upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.